Hello, everyone. I'm Zhen Yu Huang, a research scientist from Meta. Today, I will present inference deployments and computation implications together with my colleagues Xiaodong Wang and Chen Zhao from Meta. In April, we launched the Meta AI app powered by Llama 4. I will walk you through an example to illustrate the concept of our LM inference system. We asked it a simple question using the prompt, what is LM inference? The app responds by generating the answer word by word or totem by totem. So what exactly is LM inference? It refers to the process of generating text or responses based on large language model. A typical LM inference system consists of two stages, the prefill stage and then the decoding stage. The prefill stage takes a prompt sequence to set up the internal tone test for generating the responses. And then the decoding stage utilizes and updates the tone text from prefill stage to generate the output token step by step. The prefill stage processes a single prompt sequence of thousands of tokens at once, generating the key value cache or KB cache for each transformer layer of the large language model. Note that the attention might scale quadratically with sequence length. Overall, prefill is computer bound. Decoding, on the other end, shows much less impact from the computer complexity. Instead, the IO time of reading memory dominates the decoding time. Model weights and KB cache occupy the majority of the memory. With the model weights fixed, the KB cache sizes is determined by the sequence length and batch sizes. Overall, the decoding is memory bounded. So our goal with LM inference system is to optimize several key performance metrics. We want a cheaper cost to maximize the GPU utilization. We want to have higher throughput to serve more users. And most importantly, we want to minimize the latency for the best user experiences. Time to first totem or TTFT. It only delays the start of the output stream. The time to incremental token or TTIT for decoding is more important for overall perceived performance. So now you, you have heard about the metrics. Let's get to three types of inference parallelism for scale. In the remainder of our talk, Chen will talk about tensor parallelism. You will hear context parallelism from me and aspect parallelism from Xiaodong. So now I will hand over to Chen to discuss about tensor parallelism. All right, thank you for the great introduction from Jian Yu. Now let's take a look at what tensor parallelism is. Tensor parallelism is a way of model sharding. So this is a greatly simplified example. Imagine on the left-hand side, you don't have any tensor parallelism. You have one by two input vector. You multiply by a two by two model weight. You get a one by two output. Now let's imagine the model is too big to fit in one GPU. What do we do here? The natural way of doing this is split the model into multiple GPUs. In this example, we split the row-wise, the first row on the GPU 0 and the second row on GPU 1. We also split the input here. And after the multiplication, we get the partial results out, 1 by 2, y0, and 1, 1 vector. Now, in order to get the original result back, we have to run or reduce to aggregate the results. So with tensor parallelism, you can fit a larger model into multiple GPUs, but we need to introduce a new collective or reduce here. Now, let's take a look at a trace from our real production workload. As you can see highlighted from here, a nickel kernel or reduce takes up to 30% of end-to-end -end latency. It's pretty significant. This means any 10% improvement of or reduce can give us about 3% end-to-end -end gain. As mentioned in Jen Yu's earlier post, prefill message range from 10 to 100 megabytes, where decoding messages is even smaller. It ranges from 100k to 2 megabytes. 
So here's the question. How do we improve or reduce for such smaller messages or reduce? So here we introduce a new algorithm called direct data access, or DDA for short. So unlike ring algorithm where we reduce the data in ON steps, it scales up with the number of ranks. With DDA, we reduce all data in one shot. So in this example, rank zero will fetch the data directly from every other rank and perform a reduction locally. This will significantly reduce the number of latency by paying the cost of moving a lot more data. In this case, we are moving n square of data compared to on in ring. Now, since the data size is pretty small, the extra movement didn't cost us much. What happens if the message size is slightly larger? So we have another DDA variant called DDA tree. So unlike the DDA flat, we do reduction in one step. DDA tree does reduction in two steps. The first one, we do reduce scatter. The second step, we do an all gather. So in this way, we are moving the same amount of data as ring, but we are just moving a lot more data in each step. So we are still be able to reduce the latency to a constant factor O2 here. So we expect this outperform nickel baseline for slightly large messages. Now let's take a look at our AMD launch production results. So here's the performance speed up gain. The X axis is the message size, where the Y axis is the speed up. As you can see, when the message serves pretty small, the gain can go up to above 50%. And when the message size gets increased, the gain decreases. This makes sense because when message size gets bigger, all reduces more bandwidth bound than latency bound. That means the ring algorithm will start outperforming DDA for large messages. Here's the end-to-end -end performance charts. Left-hand side, we on pre-fill stage, we implement communication compute fuse kernel. This boosts up the all reduce from 10% to 30%. On the decoding side, we adopted DDA. It bumps the performance from 10% to 50%. All this all reduce performance improvements translate to about 4% for pre-fill end-to-end gain and 10% for decoding. With that, I'm going to hand back to my colleague, Jian Yu, to talk about context parallelism. Thanks, Chen. Now I will cover context parallelism. We want to first demonstrate our advancements in long context inference in Lama 4, specifically for our 1 million and 10 million context capabilities. Let's start with IROP, which stands for interleaved attention layers it achieves an infinite context length, extending up to 10 million context lengths. To support this, we have applied various optimizations. Context parallelism, which allows us to efficiently partition the long context across multiple GPUs and hosts. Fast attention kernels, which is a critical component that accelerates attention mechanisms. With these optimizations, we can achieve less than one minute for one million context lengths using a single H100 host with eight GPUs, and less than one minute for 10 million context lengths on multiple H100 hosts. There are unique challenges for long context inference. For compute, dense attention flops scale quadratically with context lengths and their attention dominates the overall computer time. For memory, the KV cache grows linearly with long context length. And for the communication, the latency increases when we partition to multiple GPU or multiple hosts. We implemented two variants of context parallelism in attention modules. Here is a simple example with two nodes. Let's say we have four input tokens and split them onto two CP ranks. CP rank zero calculate Q key value zero and one. CP rank one calculates Q key value two and three. On the left side, with pass KV algorithm, we will switch key and value tensors 
between these two CP runs. Then we will calculate the attention intentions between query 0 and 1 with key and value 2 and 3. And similarly for CP rent 1. With pass Q algorithm on the right side, we will switch query tensors between these two CP rents. Then we will calculate the corresponding attention intentions. When we extend to more nodes like 4, it will have more steps to finish this pass KV or pass Q algorithms. You can see these CP rents pass a query or KV in a ring fashion. So we also call this ring attention. With all these optimizations and algorithms, we achieved linear scaling with context parallelism. Using Lama 3, 4, 5B as an example, we achieved less than four seconds with context parallelism over 16 nodes and 77 seconds for 1 million context lengths. Now we cover context parallelism. I will hand over to Xiaodong for asset parallelism and the rest of the talk. Thank you, Jianyu. So now we have here about tensor parallelism and context parallelism. Now let's take a look at the expert parallelism. But before I go into details, let's first take a look at the architecture of the Lama 4 Maverick model. This is a transformer block. At the beginning, we have an attention module. The output of the attention module will go to the shared expert and also the 128 routed experts. The attention output will first go through a router. The router will pick one out of the 128 experts and go through the fully connected layers. And the output of the shared expert and the route experts will go to the scattered add module to sum it up. And then it will be fed into the next transformer block. So now you see we have a large number of experts. We cannot fit the model onto a single host with AGPUs. And therefore, we will need the expert parallelism. Now let's take a look at how the expert parallelism works. In this more detailed example, we have two hosts and two GPUs on each of the hosts. And you see on the left-hand side, we have host zero, and we have routed expert zero sitting on this host, and it was tensor parallelism across the two GPUs. And vice versa. On the right-hand side, we have host one hosting the routed expert number one. And we have different batch of data, batch one and batch two fed into the two different hosts. And because of the router, will route the tokens of each individual host to different experts, route expert zero and route expert one. We will need a all-to-all -all module first to dispatch these tokens to the target experts. And after the computation is done, we will have a second all-to-all -all in the purple block that dispatch the tokens back to where it is coming from. And we have done a lot of nations, say overlapping the all-to-all -all communication with the shared expert computation to overlap the compute and communication so that we take advantage of all the GPU resources. However, in the next slide, we will see that although there's about like 30-40% overlapping between the shared expert computation and the all-to-all -all before the routed experts, it's still quite exposed. And end-to-end, -end, we see about 10-30% to contribute to the all-to-all -all because it cannot overlap perfectly with the shared expert computation. And this, in particular, is worse in the decode region, where the message size is about 100 kilobyte to 2 megabyte, which is quite small from the networking perspective. So our solution is dynamic all-to-all. -all. So in the decode, we actually introduce a technique called CUDA graph. The CUDA graph is necessary because the decode usually operates at the very small batch size, and the kernels are usually very small. So the CPU overhead actually is pretty significant. Say the kernel launch overhead can be fairly large and slow down the GPUs. CUDA graph is a technique to dispatch all the kernels ahead of time to save all the CPU overheads. However, a limitation about CUDA graph is it requires all the input tensors to be static. But as you see in the previous slides, the router in the MOE architecture is actually not static. It will dispatch different tokens to different experts at different iteration, and therefore the tensor size is different. Our solution is to have a padding on the router output 
to make it static to satisfy the requirement of the CUDA graph. And in this example, you see we have like on local rank zero, it has token A to H. And after the first auto wall, it will only send AC and LK to the local rank zero. And the rest is actually padded to respond to like the worst case scenario where all the tokens are routed to this expert. So dynamic auto wall actually operate on the padded tensor. But under the hood, it actually just send the AC and LK to the target rank so that it will not send all the padded bytes to save the traffic. And this is a very effective optimization that can actually save the number of bytes that will send over the wire. And our second optimization is called persistent auto wall. Our profiling of our collective kernels shows the majority slowdown come from the memory handle exchange, network load balancing, and CPU overhead. And the persistent auto wall will get rid of all these CPU overheads. And we'll see in this table, compared to the nickel baseline, our custom transport we call CTRAN, which will be open source very soon, that this optimization actually brings about 22% to 51% on various of sizes compared to the popular nickel baseline. All right, now you have to hear about the three types of parallelism, tensor parallel, context parallel, and expert parallelism, and their corresponding communication optimizations. We, we think we have three main takeaways. The first one is the latency bound regime optimization is really important. As you see from the beginning of the talk, the LM inference space has prefer and decode, and the decode is usually operate at the very small tensor size, which is very latency critical. And optimization for that range is very important for the end-to-end -end latency, which is where our user experience is coming from. And secondly, we believe there are op opportunities in the system level optimization. So as you see in the expert parallelism, the all 2 all dynamic, like besides optimizing for sending the bytes over the wire, we can also optimize to send less bytes over the wire so that we can co-design our system and model with the communication collectives to further improve our performance, especially in this latency bound regime. And thirdly, we believe a heterogeneous hardware platform is the future. We believe a good communication collective kernels need to work on both NVIDIA, AMD GPUs, and custom silicons like our future MTI platform. All right, so now let's looking forward. We believe for future, we have three main challenges. The first one is we believe the communication is going into the kernel. So we have done heavy optimizations on the kernel itself, whether it's the gem or the collectives. But there is actually a data dependency between the gem and the collective that we cannot use both the computation and the communication at the same time. And the idea is here is we can actually fuse these two kernels together, that we can tile the gems and compute just one tile of the gem output and then send it over the wire while we are computing the next tile of the gem. In that way, we can use both the computation units and the communication units to make the best use of our hardware. And this will actually require a device initiated collective, which is where we're exploring. We have prototype with the PyTorch symmetric memory with NVSHMAM, which is open source in PyTorch. And lastly, we want to involve with the cloud fabric design, especially for the latency bound regime. Our communication collective need to work closely with the cloud fabric design for the best of the performance. So with these challenges, we believe we have a bright future. We have still a lot of work to do. And the LM large language model space is still exploding. So if you're interested, please reach out to us. We would like to work with you for the bright future. And with that, thank you for your attention.